we want to find all the values of x such that the given series would converge, which is called the interval of convergence. Looking at our infinite series here, notice how for this series, this series is centered at x equals seven because we have the quantity x minus seven here. We'll first apply the ratio test given here, where we know this limit must be less than one for the series to converge. This will give us an open interval of convergence, and then from there we'll test the endpoints for convergence. So before we apply the ratio test, notice that a sub n is equal to the quantity x minus seven raised to the nth, divided by seven to the nth, and therefore a sub n plus one would be equal to the quantity x minus seven to the power of n plus one, divided by seven to the power of n plus one. So now we'll apply the ratio test, which would give us the limit as n approaches infinity of the absolute value of a sub n plus one divided by a sub n. Instead of dividing here, we'll multiply by the reciprocal of a sub n instead. So we first have a sub n plus one, and then times the reciprocal of a sub n, that'd be seven to the n divided by x minus seven to the nth. And now we'll simplify. Notice how here we have one more factor of seven in the denominator because we have n plus one factors of seven here and only n factors of seven here. So this simplifies to one, this simplifies to one factor of seven. And notice here we have one more factor of x minus seven in the numerator. So this simplifies to one, this simplifies to one factor of x minus seven. So now we have the limit as n approaches infinity of the absolute value of x minus seven divided by seven. We'll notice how this is not affected by n as n approaches infinity, and therefore this limit is equal to the absolute value of x minus seven divided by seven. In order for this series to converge though, this limit must be less than one. So if we solve this absolute value inequality for x, this will give us the open interval of convergence, and then we'll test the endpoints. So to solve this absolute value inequality, we can go ahead and factor out positive one-seventh and write this as one-seventh times the absolute value of x minus seven is less than one. Multiply both sides by seven. And notice how here again we can see this interval is going to be centered at seven. We can also see that the radius of convergence will be positive seven. To solve this absolute value inequality, this is telling us that x minus seven must be less than seven and x minus seven must be greater than negative seven. So we add seven here, we have x is less than 14 and here we have x is greater than zero. So the open interval of convergence would be from zero to 14, but the series may still converge at the endpoints, so now we'll test the endpoints. So first when x equals zero, we would have the summation from n equals one to infinity of negative seven to the nth divided by seven to the nth. And we can write this as the summation from n equals one to infinity of, we could say negative one to the nth times seven to the nth divided by seven to the nth, if that's helpful. Notice how this simplifies nicely. And we have the summation from n equals one to infinity of negative one raised to the power of n. We know this diverges for two reasons. By the geometric series test, the absolute value of r would be equal to one, and therefore the series diverges. This also fails the nth term divergence test. So we'll say by the geometric series test, with the absolute value of r equals, in this case, the absolute value of negative one, which is greater than or equal to one, the series diverges at x equals zero. And now we'll test at x equals 14. When x equals 14, we'd have the summation from n equals one to infinity of seven to the n divided by seven to the n. Now simplifying, because the bases are the same, 
we would subtract the exponents. This would give us the summation from n equals one to infinity of seven raised to the power of n minus n, that'd be seven to the zero, which equals one. And by the nth term divergence test, since the limit as n approaches infinity of one doesn't equal zero, the series diverges at x equals fourteen. So by the nth term divergence test, the series diverges at x equals fourteen. So notice how the series was divergent at both endpoints, and therefore the interval of convergence remains the open interval from zero to fourteen. So to answer the question, the series is convergent from x equals zero. It does not include the left endpoint, so we say no, to x equals fourteen. It does not include the right endpoint either, so we say no again. Again, the interval of convergence is the open interval from zero to fourteen. I hope you found this helpful.